Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi. It's the 25th of May. I'm in the ruins of Inchbacombe Abbey on an island in Lake of Menteith, Scotland's only lake. And welcome to today's episode of This Day in Scottish History. Now, the reason that I'm here is because amongst the various people of significance that are buried here in the Graham lands, uh, there's one guy of particular note that I want to talk about today. And he was born on this day in 1582. Uh, I'll be honest with you, he was actually born yesterday, but when I put it in my diary, I copped up the date. Uh, look, you're getting this for nothing, so shut it. This guy was a politician and a member of the Westminster Parliament. His father was Major William Bontine, who had been a cornet in the Scots Greys. His mother was the Honourable Anne Elizabeth Elphinstone Fleming. His maternal grandparents were Admiral Charles Elphinstone Fleming of Cumbernauld and a Spanish noblewoman. And he spent most of his childhood on the family estate in Finlayson in Renfrewshire, although he was educated at Harrow. You've probably already guessed his political allegiances. But suspend your judgment, don't hold politics against them. Uh, in my own lifetime, depending on where I've lived and the issues of the day, I've voted for each of the main four political parties in Scotland. Uh, I've voted Labour, I've voted SNP, I've voted for the Liberal Democrats, and of course, I've voted for the Greens. <laughs> you thought I was going to say Conservative. No, 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 no. I'm far too well brought up for that. Uh, anyway, I suppose in spite of his high birth, Robert Bontine Cunningham Graham was a wee bit like me. Uh, as I say, his grandmother was a Spanish noblewoman. Her name was Donna Catalina Paulina Alessandro de Jimenez. Uh, her other grandson worked as a waiter in a hotel in Turkey. Um, his life was immortalised in the documentary series Faulty Towers, uh, just in case the original joke was too subtle for you. Um, anyway, Robert Cunningham Graham's life was very different to Manuel's. Uh, after school, he went off to Argentina to become a cowboy, a gaucho. Uh, he made a fortune in beef, bully for him. In Argentina, they called him Don Roberto. And I'm going to call him that from now on because it's much sexier than Robert Bontine Cunningham Graham. Uh, and it fits with his adventurous lifestyle. Now, Don Roberto travelled to Mexico City by wagon train with his wife, Gabrielle Childuck de la Balmondier. Uh, she was a half-French, half-Chilean poet. Actually, later, it turned out she was really the daughter of an English doctor who'd repeatedly run away to join the theatre. Um, the, the, the daughter ran away to join the theatre, um, not the doctor. I was going to put in a joke there about a doctor running off to join the theatre, but I said to my wife, if they didn't get the joke about Manuel from Forty Towers, they're never going to get one about the nomenclature for people in the medical profession. And she said, what does nomenclature mean? This is what I'm dealing with. The point is that Don Roberto's wife wasn't quite what she seemed. So his mum concocted a story so that this commoner wouldn't cause an embarrassment at dinner parties. Who oh, knew, no, Your Lordship? It was the dog who farted during the soup course. Anyway, Don Roberto uh, taught fencing in Texas and befriended Buffalo Bill before coming home to Scotland and befriending another great character, Keir Hardy. That's right, he was a socialist. Oh, Jeremy Corbyn. In 1886, he became the first socialist MP to sit in the House of Commons. He actually stood for the Liberal Party. His election programme was radical. Some would say mental. He called for the abolition of the House of Lords, universal suffrage, nationalisation of industries, free school meals, disestablishment of the Church of England, Scottish Home Rule and an eight-hour working day. Fantasy politics. Mental. He tried several times to bring forward a bill for an eight-hour working day, but he couldn't get the Conservative government to allocate time for a debate. He was the first MP to be suspended from the House of Commons for swearing. That's right, he used the word damn. Fucking hell, he was a radical. 
He made a speech in Cali that the French authorities considered so revolutionary that he was arrested and expelled from France. On the 13th of November, 1887, Don Roberto was beaten up by the police, arrested, taken to Bow Street Police Station and found guilty of involvement of a protest in Trafalgar Square. Uh, and he was sent straight to Pentonville Prison. He didn't even pass go or collect £200. Clearly, the Liberal Party wasn't radical enough to hold Don Roberto for very long. And he left in 1892 to contest the general election as a Labour candidate. But he wasn't happy with what he called the piss-pot socialists in the Labour Party. But he did have a strong belief in Scottish independence. And so he was involved in setting up the National Party of Scotland in 1928. He was elected the honorary president of the Scottish National Party in 1934. He was some boy. Now, I know that I'm going to get complaints from extremists on one side of the political debate that I'm being a mouthpiece for the other side. Don't be daft. I'm just telling you a story about an interesting Scottish character in history. In fact, look, here's a picture of Tom Gray. He's my SNP councillor. I like him. But I won't be doing an episode about him because he doesn't have a street named after him in Buenos Aires. This is Struan Stevenson. He was my Conservative MEP. I like him. But I won't be doing an episode about him because he didn't travel to the Atlas Mountains in Morocco to a town forbidden to Christians, get put in prison for his troubles and write a book about it. Although he might have done something slightly embarrassing after a drink at the European Parliament and burned supper. Don't worry, Struan, I'm not telling them. Anyway, congratulations for your answers to the last episode. Go to James Miles, Eisted, June Stewart, Carol Murray, Deborah Bird, and my old workmate, Jeremy Spurgeon. Oh, Jeremy Spurgeon. Uh, Scott Bertram, uh, kind of got a half right. Uh, you got the time, but not the place. Uh, today's question, uh, there was another high-class Scottish person who was a pioneer in Westminster Parliament. She was known as the Red Duchess. Who was she and what party did she represent? Answers in the comment section below. Uh, I'll be honest, this episode has been a wee bit longer than I would have liked, but it only scratches the surface of a life that transcends politics. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like and share the clip. Share it, share it, share it. Like and share the Facebook page, Scotland History Tours. Better still, Go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Scotland History Tours. Uh, or, listen, I do guided tours. Why not go on to www.scotlandhistorytours.co.uk, find out about the tours that I do, and come along with me on one of them. Uh, Hamindokas can be la ma live. Cheerio and